Hi, my name is Mark, and I wanted to make a quick YouTube video to talk about the style of spindle motor upgrade that I installed on this machine, and why I think it's a great option for hobbyists and other garage workshop machining enthusiasts. So let's get right into it. Here's what I've done. I've got an approximately one and a half kilowatt brushless DC motor here, and it's mounted in this aluminum cradle, which holds it relative to the casting of the lathe itself. I want to interject a further comment here about the design of this aluminum cradle. These four colored fasteners, in addition with the four on the opposite side of the lathe, hold the cradle securely against the casting. They also allow for adjustable leveling of the cradle, which is critical to ensure proper alignment of the drive belt. Once leveling is dialed in, the belt will track perfectly in both forwards and reverse. So how is the motor mounted, and how is the pulley supported? So this motor is a piece of scrap that was given to me, and it came with a particularly long shaft. The shaft extends from the tip of the motor here, all the way out past the encoder here. So on the back side, the motor is supported by this block, which clamps it. I have custom machined a few parts here. And the drive pulley is mounted midway on the shaft that extends out past the end of the motor. Uh, the very tip of the shaft is supported by a bearing, which is embedded in this block, and the encoder is mounted onto the very end with a press fit collet. And now seems like an appropriate time to drop in some machining b-roll footage. This component is the round standoff that actually fastens to the motor, and is clamped by the aluminum cradle. This part required some pretty tight tolerances, especially the location of the three fastener clearance holes. Here's the finishing pass, performed as a single contour at full depth. I also used the router to choose some clearance features for the three coil winding connections. I was originally considering replacing the entire pulley drive system, but then I was looking at beefy timing belt replacements online, and they were pretty expensive. So this modification reuses the original drive belt, and I also 3D printed a replacement pulley, which mounts to the motor shaft. For those who care, this is a 4040 brushless motor with 14 poles and 400 kV. I would have liked to have used one of the classic Turnigy SK3 192 kV motors, but those are very expensive, and this one was free. I'm using a 350 watt, 48 volt power supply to power the entire system. This probably leaves some performance headroom on the table, because this motor is rated at about 1.5 kilowatts. But let's be real, this machine is never going to be achieving a material removal rate anywhere close to requiring 1500 watts of power. So what sets this apart from many other similar modifications online is the style of motor driver that I chose to use. I opted to go for an O-Drive S1 instead of a VESC, as many other people online use. So what makes the O-Drive so much of a better option than a VESC or other electronic speed controllers that are commonly used for this kind of modification? Well, despite being not much more expensive than a VESC, an O-Drive is a field-oriented absolute control motor driver. What are the advantages of a field-oriented motor driver? A VESC or other similar speed controllers rely on sensing back EMF of the motor to control its rotational velocity. But the O-Drive uses encoder to detect the actual position of the motor. This means that the O-Drive knows at any time which coils in the motor it has to energize to achieve a specific position. This gives much greater control over the motor and also it provides low end torque, which is essential for running a machine like a lathe. So how do I interact with this fancy motor driver while I'm using the machine and tell it how fast I actually want the spindle to turn? Well, I was running out of time on the project, so I used an Arduino to monitor the potentiometer that originally came with the lathe. The Arduino reads the position of the potentiometer and then sends serial commands to the O-Drive motor controller telling it how fast the spindle should be turning. The other functions that originally came with the machine are currently disabled and that means for safety I've got a special little arming sequence programmed into the potentiometer which prevents the machine from starting up unexpectedly. So here I'll demonstrate the arming sequence. With the machine plugged in and powered on, all you have to do is crank the potentiometer all the way to maximum, crank it all the way off, and then the spindle is enabled. All right, so here we're gonna make a cut in some 6061 aluminum with a high-speed steel tool.
great surface finish. The tapered spindle roller bearings are a terrific upgrade as well. Here we've got a more challenging material, some mild steel of unknown grade and no cutting fluid. Let's give it a go. That's a pretty serviceable result. I want to say a few more words about this machine. The tapered roller bearings in the spindle headstock are a requirement if you want to get decent quality cuts. I've also heard many people recommend bolting this machine down to a bench, but the problem with that is it's no longer mobile. I have been having a great time using this machine on this custom steel frame that I welded for it. It adds a lot of mass and rigidity to the machine, but I haven't sacrificed the ability to move this around the workshop if required. Having used this modification for about a year now, I've been very happy with the performance of the machine. I can wholeheartedly recommend that people use a similar approach to modify their own lathes. Using an O-Drive motor controller and a powerful brushless DC motor is, in my opinion, the best possible upgrade for a hobby-grade lathe like this. Because I completed this modification using scrap components that were given to me for free, it may be difficult to exactly replicate this modification. However, all the CAD and the code that I used to complete this project are going to be available on my GrabCAD and GitHub. I hope that this video can be useful for others who are also considering modifying their spindle motor drives, and I hope that this video spurs on further innovation. Thanks for watching!